Episode 14, Nathan Resorts to Threats. Emma, I'm the president of Global Entertainment. I make the decisions, not you. Nathan was furious. Why are you insisting on taking Amber's deal? You think this was my idea? Bellamy asked for me and said they would take their business elsewhere unless I stepped up. I took the deal for your sake, so Global wouldn't be left with nothing. You know, I hadn't believed the rumors about you and Amber, but if you'd rather take a loss like that than have me be the spokesperson, then maybe the two of you do have something going on after all. Of course not, he denied hastily. I can't believe you'd say such a thing. It's just that since we're going to get married and start a family soon, I figured you'd rather not take on any extra professional responsibilities. But Emma wasn't done. Oh, so would you like to try explaining that to Julius Taylor? And what do you mean by saying that I took the deal from Amber? As far as I can tell, she's done all the taking. She's been doing it for years. Amber was getting angry now as well, resenting the accusations and the suggestions that she hadn't earned her own success. Emma, you're the one who stepped out of the limelight. I didn't take anything from you. What did you think was going to happen to your work? That we just let it go to another company? Fine, Emma said. You're right. If you can persuade Mr. Taylor to change his mind, I'll step down. Could Emma really be giving in? Nathan was now stuck in a difficult position. Emma was obviously still angry, or else she wouldn't have had the nerve to defy him like she never had before. And he'd promised Amber that Emma would give her back the deal. But ultimately, it was clear that Bellamy would take their contract somewhere else if they didn't get Emma. In the end, he had to protect the bottom line. Enough. Since Bellamy has requested Emma and Emma has already agreed, we're going with her. But Nathan, Amber whined. I made my decision, he snapped. It's time for both of you to accept it and leave. Emma, ask Lisa to come in when you go. It was clear that, even though he was left with no choice, he resented being pushed into the decision. Emma had a pretty good idea what Nathan was thinking, but if he expected her to feel bad about hurting his feelings, he was dreaming. Amber followed Emma out of the office, her anger continuing to boil up inside her. But she comforted herself that, even if Emma appeared to be making a comeback right now, she wasn't that popular yet. Amber planned to do everything she could to crush her. As soon as she saw her assistant, Gary, who was waiting in the lobby, she said, I want you to take a few photos of me working hard to recover and post them online. Let's stir up my fans' sympathy and get them to complain that Emma has stolen my deal. If I can't have it, I'm not going to let her take it. Don't you worry, Gary said. I know exactly what to do. Emma found Lisa waiting in her office and said, Nathan wants to talk to you. Don't be too nervous. Nervous? Are you kidding me? Who do you think I am? Lisa rolled her eyes. It's not my first day on the job, you know. If he thinks I'm just some pushover he can tear down, he's in for a shock. She headed into Nathan's office, a fierce expression on her face. She was not going to hold back. Nathan thrust a pile of papers in front of Lisa. I'm terminating your agreement with Global. You need to leave the premises. And you should make preparations to compensate us for breach of contract. Leave? Lisa laughed. Nathan, you must have a bad memory. When I first signed my contract, my salary was clearly stated alongside Emma's appearance fees. With all the work you've let Amber steal from her, I haven't once gotten paid as much as my contract stipulates. And the posts I made were all in Emma's best interests, ultimately benefiting the company. I did nothing wrong. If anyone should be worrying about breach of contract, it's you. You. Nathan couldn't believe his ears. If you aren't afraid of making global situation worse, we can always take this to court. I'm fine with that. But you might want to think about the rest of the industry losing trust in your brand. She paused to let her words sink in. Look, Nathan, I obviously won't be staying, but I don't want to leave on bad terms. Let's make this as painless as possible. What do you want? He muttered through gritted teeth. I'll agree to leave Global without a fuss, and you'll let all of this drop. You won't come after me for any kind of compensation, and from now on, we don't owe each other anything. 
He glared at her angrily, but recognized that this was the only option he had left. Fine, just leave. I don't want to see you again. Nathan, let me give you a warning. There is no wall thick enough to block out what you've got coming to you. You'll be paying for the way you treated Emma for a very long time. Nathan glared at her as she walked out of the door with the now worthless paperwork he'd based his whole plan on. He grabbed his desk and flipped it over, scattering the contents all over the floor. Instead of leaving the building, Lisa went back to Emma's office, where the two of them celebrated the success of this part of the plan and set to work plotting their next steps. When Nathan left his office to take a break, they ran straight into each other. Why are you still here? He asked. Emma froze for a moment. Then she replied, I just hired Lisa. Emma, what are you talking about? It's Global's call who will be managing you, not yours. She was driving him crazy. Oh, I didn't hire Lisa to be my manager. I hired her to be my assistant. It's in my contract that I can hire my own assistant, isn't it? Emma smiled sweetly. Lisa has looked after me so well for so long. She's the only person I trust to understand what I need to do a good job. Nathan pulled her aside, out of Lisa's earshot. Emma, what's wrong with you? Are you doing this just to spite me? Not everything is about you, Nathan. But for your information, Lisa is a lot more thoughtful than you and has never accused me of stealing anything from anybody. He looked at her coldly. Emma, you've always supported my career before. I don't understand what's going on. I told you, that whole mess with the crown star was the last time I'll ever take the blame for you or Amber. She remained calm, her voice steady and firm, her eyes completely emotionless. Nathan took a deep breath. If you're really going to be this childish, maybe we should call off our wedding, he hissed. He was sure that this tactic would make Emma apologize and regret ever trying to go up against him. She remained silent for a few moments, allowing him to believe that his threat was sinking in and she would cave. He could never have anticipated the response she was about to give. Episode 15. Emma and Amber make plans. You don't want to get married anymore? Okay. We won't, Emma said with a pleasant smile. Let's wait until you're not busy. We can talk more later. Nathan was in shock. He reached out and grabbed Emma's shoulder. Don't you love me anymore? What about you? Do you love me? Emma carefully slipped out of his grasp, mindful of her promise to Eric not to get too close to another man. Nathan was stunned into silence. He opened his mouth, but nothing came out. The truth was he had never had any real feelings for Emma, but he wasn't ready to give up his hold over her just yet. How can you even question my love? He finally said. Of course I want to marry you. I just wish you would think a little about all the stress I'm under. It hasn't been easy trying to get Amber into the running for the top 10 model awards. It's frustrating that you can't be more understanding. Emma slowly distanced herself from him remaining composed. Well, if we're going to get married, you'll have to get used to me. This is who I am from now on. She left him standing there alone as she left the building. Nathan stood still for a while, trying to figure things out. He couldn't understand why Emma's attitude had changed so much. But after some thought, he decided she was just jealous of Amber. He didn't have the energy to chase after her and try and talk things out. After she cools down, she'll get over it, he thought. Besides, he needed to spend some time smoothing things over with Amber, who was still very upset. Emma put Nathan straight out of her mind and decided to hurry home to see Eric. The very thought of seeing him made her heart speed up in excitement. Emma, I'll take you home first so you can recharge, said Lisa. Tomorrow we're signing the Bellamy contract and then straight off for an out-of-town commercial shoot. Lisa... Would you be up for canceling the lease on your apartment and moving into my old home, rent-free? You can go ahead and change the locks. If Nathan asks, you could just say that you've moved in to work more closely with me, and he can't have a key anymore. Tomorrow, I'll sign a new contract with you. That works for me. It'll save me some money, if nothing else. After a pause, Lisa looked at Emma with a smirk. 
the mighty president of Kaleidoscope. How are things going there? Don't be so nosy, Emma replied, refusing to meet her friend's eyes. When Emma got to Eric's place, he wasn't back yet. She made her way into the kitchen and found his personal chef preparing dinner. Please, let me help, she said. There's no need. I wouldn't want to trouble you, the chef, an amicable middle-aged woman, answered. How about this instead, Emma suggested. Please, let me give you the rest of the day off, and I'll cook dinner for Eric tonight. After some persuasion, Emma ushered the chef out of the kitchen and started her own cooking. Eric didn't get home until late at night. Not seeing Emma at first, he followed his nose to the kitchen. He was surprised to see her standing at the stove wearing an apron. After a moment admiring her long, slender legs, he quietly approached her, hugged her from behind, and gently kissed the back of her neck. Eric, careful, I'm cooking. Don't you want to eat? He reached over and turned off the stove. I sure do, but right now, I just want to nibble on you. Emma put down the spoon and turned around to hug Eric. His soft touch completely captivated her. He kissed her gently, inching slowly down her body before returning to her collarbone, where he stopped. Any lower, and I won't be able to control myself. The dinner! I need to finish cooking. She pushed away from his embrace and turned on the stove again. He chuckled and massaged her shoulders as he inhaled the delicious aroma. Let me help you cook. Mr. Eric Roberts, CEO of Kaleidoscope, can cook? Emma asked, raising her eyebrows. You know, this one time is okay, he said softly. But from now on, no more cooking for you. You shouldn't have to put in all this work, and it would be a tragedy if you scalded yourself. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself in the kitchen, she said playfully, touched by his concern. They continued preparing their dinner together. It turned out that Eric was actually quite an accomplished cook. When the meal was ready, they took a moment to admire the gorgeous spread they'd put together. It felt special, like something not just any couple could do in such perfect sync. As they sat down to enjoy their meal together, Emma said, Tomorrow, I'm headed to Seattle for a commercial shoot. I'm not sure how long the trip will be, but I definitely won't be home tomorrow night. Are you signing the contract with Bellamy tomorrow? Will you be leaving right after that? Yes, Bellamy wants to launch their new product as soon as possible, she said. Eric, I'll need some time, but I know that I can rise to a position that you'll be proud of. I'm already proud of you, but I have no doubts that you can reach the most dizzying heights of the industry, he responded, placing a morsel of food on Emma's plate. Not only was he looking forward to seeing her advance, he was also gleefully anticipating just how miserable Nathan and Amber would be. Meanwhile, the wind and rain had picked up, matching Amber's stormy mood. She returned to Nathan's house in a fury and began grabbing plates, cups, and bowls, smashing them by hurling them to the ground as hard as she could. Every time she thought of Emma signing the Bellamy contract, her rage took over and she smashed something else. To make matters worse, Nathan had actually supported Emma. The whole thing was unbearable. Nathan came home to find the floor covered in shards of broken crockery and Amber holding a vase above her head, ready to hurl it down. He carefully picked his way across the floor, grabbed the valuable vase, and embraced her. Try not to get so upset. It's not good for you or the baby. Oh, you think you know what's best for me and the baby? You just stood by and let Emma steal that huge deal out from under me. How is that good for any of us? We still have plenty of options. I'm already working on securing an even bigger deal for you. Stop focusing on Emma. Even if she is working with Bella me now, nothing's going to come of it for her. Listen to me, babe. Don't hurt yourself. She's held on to you for so many years, said Amber with tears in her eyes. I can't let her have this too. It felt like the only comfort at that moment was that Gary's efforts were already having an effect. He was posting content to rip Emma's reputation to shreds, and it was paying off. Even if Amber couldn't end up winning exactly how she wanted, she was determined to see Emma lose. 
and the next part of the plan was about to unfold. She told Gary to post the details of Emma's travel schedule, giving Amber's supporters plenty of opportunities to cause trouble. The next day, Emma was going to see that she really shouldn't have messed with Amber. Episode 16. Give the contract back. The Bellamy contract signing ceremony was scheduled for 9 a.m. and would be streamed live. After the broadcast, Bellamy's support for Emma would be clear to everyone. It had been three years since Emma had attended an event like this, and she'd almost forgotten how it felt. But as soon as she put on her white, low-backed dress and the jewelry Bellamy had provided for her for the occasion... She found herself glowing with confidence. Lisa had arrived early at Emma's new home to pick her up and see if she needed anything. Emma had let Eric know about their new arrangement, so Lisa had access to the place whenever she needed it. She was eager to get a better look at Eric's gorgeous home. Emma was getting ready in the bedroom and invited Lisa to come in. Your husband has excellent taste, Lisa gushed, gazing around the room in awe. This place is spectacular. Eric came into the room and said to Lisa, I have something I need to talk about with Emma. Could you give us some privacy? Sure, I'll step out for a bit. Lisa headed out to explore more of the rooms, closing the door as she left the bedroom. Emma faced Eric, feeling fresh and elegant as a lily. His breath caught as he looked at her. Is something wrong? She asked. He didn't answer at first. Instead, he just reached for Emma and pulled her into an embrace, gently covering her mouth with his. Nothing is wrong. I just needed to kiss you, and I couldn't wait any longer. Emma felt herself getting swept up in the moment as well, but she moved away reluctantly. I need to go. I can't be late. I'll be watching the live stream of the contract signing, he said, and they walked out of the room arm in arm to find Lisa. Lisa was captivated by the sight of the couple. They were opposites, complementing each other perfectly. Emma was like white, pure snow, while Eric was as alluring as a dangerous dark night. This is how Emma's husband should look, she thought. Not like Nathan, the jerk, who's not that exciting to look at. Emma and Lisa headed down to street level together, got in Lisa's car, and headed to the signing. You'll be signing the contract at 9. We should be there by 10, so you'll be right on time. It was planned perfectly so Emma wouldn't be late, but also wouldn't be hanging around as if she had nothing better to do. Thanks for making the arrangements, Emma answered. You're always so on top of things. Hey, it's just what I do. Your flight's at three, so there's plenty of time to get to the airport after the signing. But listen, Amber has arranged for her fans to stop you at the airport. They're planning something to make you look bad. One of them's going to try to embarrass you, and the others will pretend to be random passengers who are disgusted with you. Lisa grimaced in disapproval at the thought of a grown woman resorting to schoolyard bullying tactics. How do you know all this? Because I've planted eyes on the inside, Lisa said proudly. We'll let those kids be happy playing their game for a bit, but then we'll see who has the last laugh. Emma chuckled as she shook her head. Amber certainly could stir people up to cause trouble but she was confident she could handle anything they threw at her. Right on time, Emma arrived at the hotel for the contract signing and walked past the reporters who were standing behind barriers. Emma, you disappeared after your apology, then showed up and took Amber's contract. How'd you pull that off? Is Amber accusing you of stealing her deal while she's in recovery? Emma, are you planning to make a comeback? Emma smiled graciously the whole time, but didn't respond to any of their questions. Once she got inside, she shared a warm greeting with Julius Taylor and listened attentively to how the event was going to go. Nathan had sent his regrets. He had planned to attend the signing, but was tied up elsewhere. Unfortunately for them both, this reinforced the public impression that Emma and Global were on bad terms. Of course, the real reason he couldn't attend was Amber. She'd put her foot down and refused to allow him to show up and support Emma. At Kaleidoscope's office, Eric was in his office watching the live stream. He was impressed with Emma's presence. She was poised and beautiful, impossible to ignore. As the stream ended, Eric phoned his assistant. 
get bodyguards for Emma for the next few hours. Four should be about right. I want her protected until she boards the plane. Yes, Mr. Roberts, I'll take care of it, Luke responded. Even though Emma had sailed through the contract signing, Eric was sure there were rough seas ahead. After the contract was signed, Emma and Julius sat down for brunch. After a pleasant hour, she left the hotel to head to the airport. The closer they got to their destination, the more nervous Lisa became. Emma, I'll try my best to protect you, but you have to be on guard. I've got this. Don't worry. Emma had dealt with a lot over the past few years. She was confident everything would be fine. At the airport, Lisa took the bags out of the trunk and helped Emma out of the car as well. At first, it seemed they had escaped notice. No one paid any attention to them. But once they stepped into the airport building, a gaggle of young fans ran over with flowers. Emma reached out for the flowers, but they fell to the ground before she could take hold of them. Emma, one of them shouted. Why did you throw our flowers on the floor? The others began shouting as well. We were just trying to be nice. What's your problem? I'm so sorry, she tried to say, but the group kept shouting over her. I can't believe you're such a snob. You're barely even famous. You threw away the flowers on purpose. What? You don't think we're good enough to give you a gift? Amber Lee was way nicer than you. She loves getting gifts and always stops for selfies. You think getting one deal means you're replacing her? Other people in the area were drawn into the angry group as the shouting continued. As more and more people crowded around and the number of curious onlookers grew, Amber's fans decided to start the second stage of their plan. They pushed closer to Emma, trying to cut her off from any route out of the crowd. One of them started chanting and the rest joined in. Give the contract back. Give the contract back. Give the contract back. The chanting went on and on. Emma thought she would never escape. Episode 17. Emma turns the tables. The group got louder and louder, and the people passing by started taking photos and videos. The more the group shouted at Emma, the more the onlookers started to think that Emma had really wronged Amber. Seeing no way to escape, Emma was on the verge of panicking. But after a few moments, she forced herself to take some slow, deep breaths and calm down. Instead of cowering, she took off her sunglasses to face the crowd and spoke firmly to them. I'll answer your questions, but will you answer mine first? The shouting stopped and the group looked at her, wondering what she had up her sleeve. You came to give me flowers as if you were my fans. Are you really my fans? If so, tell me, what year did I make my debut? What awards have I won? What was my most prestigious award? The fans looked blankly at each other. How could they possibly know that? None of that matters. You threw our gifts on the ground. You rejected us, one of them responded. You know that I didn't throw the flowers on the ground and that I apologized right away for dropping them. I'm sure everyone heard, and the airport security footage will show it clearly. I've also acknowledged before that Amber has a lot to teach me. So tell me, what else are you unhappy about? She spoke gently but firmly, making sure everything was clear and straight to the point. Her straightforward attitude impressed the more casual onlookers, who were starting to wonder why these fans were causing such a fuss. So much hassle over a bunch of dropped flowers was really petty, and crowding around Emma and scaring her was going too far. Fine, it's true, said one of the more aggressive fans. I'm Amber's fan, not yours. But you don't deserve to be compared to her. You stole her contract, and you should let her have it back. The woman lashed out in frustration and shoved Emma. She stumbled and would have fallen, but luckily, Eric's bodyguards had finally arrived. They helped Emma stand up, then angrily pushed the crowd back. Lisa was furious. She stood between Emma and the crowd then turned her head slightly toward Emma. You go on ahead, I'll be right behind you. Okay, Emma didn't argue. She simply put her sunglasses back on and moved aside. We want an explanation right now, insisted the aggressive fan. She shouted toward Emma. Don't even think about getting on that plane without ripping up the contract. It belongs to Amber. The hostile group linked their hands to form a human barrier, preventing them from moving into the airport. Do you really believe Amber's so pure and innocent? Lisa asked. She's definitely better than your cheap excuse for a model. 
I've recorded this whole thing, Lisa said, holding up her phone. Just you wait. When the time is right, I'll send you all a big gift. Finally, airport security and the police, with the help of Eric's bodyguards, managed to start dispersing the crowd. As quickly as possible, Emma was escorted away to a safe area. But as she was being hurried away, she asked an officer to make sure that no one in the crowd was hurt or arrested. While they waited for their flight, Lisa couldn't stop looking at her phone. Amber's flooding social media with the news that you stole her contract, Lisa said. Then what are you waiting for? It's time to release the video, Emma replied. Ooh, I've been waiting for this. Now those fans will see their goddess for the scheming rat that she really is. Not some innocent sweetheart who can do no wrong. Lisa made a call to one of her media contacts. Go ahead and post that video I sent you in case of emergency. Emma smirked to herself. There you go, Nathan. Let's see if you can save Amber this time. In the lounge at Global, Amber was relishing the stir she'd caused. She was scrolling gleefully through the photos her fans had posted from the scenes at the airport. Her dislike of Emma had now turned to an all-out hatred. She wanted Emma to really understand the consequences of messing with her. And this was just a taste. The worst was yet to come. Amber, after this incident, I'm sure you'll get even better offers, Gary said as he massaged her shoulders. I'm planning on it. I need to get a place at the Top 10 Model Awards. She smiled. Nathan's promise that he would help her get another deal had raised her confidence. Confirming his efforts to be true to his word, Nathan appeared in the doorway holding a contract. Quick, my Top 10 Model. I have a big offer here. Let's go talk about it. Amber nodded, feeling exceptionally satisfied with herself as she headed into the conference room to discuss the details. Nathan addressed the group that had already gathered in the room. Although Amber lost the contract with Bellamy, I now have a deal for her with an international cosmetics brand. She really is Global Entertainment's most precious gem. Amber beamed, basking in his enthusiastic praise. As for Emma, if anyone asks for her, tell them that she's getting married and won't be taking any more jobs. Upon hearing those words, Amber's smile grew even larger and her gaze locked with Nathan's. But just as they were staring into each other's eyes, Nathan received a phone call. At first, he had a smile on his face, but it soon disappeared. But Mr. Blair, why would you cancel the contract all of a sudden? The manager on the other end of the line was talking so loudly that everyone could hear both sides of the conversation. That indecent video of you and Amber has gone viral. I would be ashamed to be associated with the two of you. He said nothing further, just hung up the call immediately. Oh my God, what video? Amber asked. Nathan pulled out his phone and started searching. At the top of all the news feeds was a video of the two of them in the hospital bed getting intimate. What was going on in the video wasn't something they could explain away as some accident, like they had with the photos. Seeing his reaction, Amber grabbed the phone away from him. She was so stunned by what she saw, she dropped it on the floor. How could this happen? How? Everyone else in the room took out their phones to see what was going on. Amber started yelling, don't look, don't look. It's over. Everything's over. Nathan angrily plopped down on his chair like a child. Someone's trying to ruin me. Amber's official fan page was also in an uproar. Her fans had accepted the accusations and stormed over to the airport to insult Emma. But now, they felt like they'd been slapped in the face. The video had started spreading like wildfire by the time Lisa and Emma boarded their flight. Lisa was scrolling through Amber's feeds, watching her fans tear her down. She smirked as she read through the comments. I never thought Amber would be so cheap. We must have been blind to idolize her. I've lost all respect for her. Me too. Me too. We should be the ones to prove Emma's innocence. At the airport, we insulted her, but she never tried to get back at us. But even when the police were breaking us up, she told them not to hurt us. I overheard her telling them. Amber must have planned that whole scene. Her assistant was the one who gave us Emma's schedule. Lisa's smile stretched from ear to ear. This was all so satisfying. She could only imagine that Amber and Nathan must be in a real panic. Emma, how are you so smart? I really love you. Lisa wrapped Emma in a hug as she planted a kiss on her cheek. 
But I don't love you, Emma replied teasingly. Then who do you love, Mr. Kaleidoscope? Emma was indeed thinking of Eric and was especially missing his kisses. If she wasn't careful, kissing him would become a habit. Episode 18. Emma's skills are tested. In an instant, Nathan and Amber's news became the talk of the town. Even Global's PR team couldn't make this story go away. Their previous success in hiding the truth behind the damaging photos was wiped out. Everyone had known that Nathan and Emma were engaged. Now they also knew that Nathan was a cheat and Amber was a conniving liar. To make matters worse, an entertainment reporter stepped up with additional news. He revealed that Emma had nothing to do with the decision to fill in for Amber as the model for the crown star. Now the world knew the truth, that Nathan and Amber had pushed for Emma to stand in for Amber, and then Nathan had forced her to take the blame for the whole situation. The online community was in an uproar, but worse was yet to come. Later that day, even bigger news came out regarding the incident at the airport. At first, things had gone according to plan, and Emma had been criticized for being rude to her fans. But after the video from the hospital was released, Amber's fans decided that they'd had enough and could no longer support their former idol at Emma's expense. They posted a statement on the official fan page clearing Emma of any fault at the airport. The statement revealed that Amber had encouraged them to plan the whole thing to embarrass Emma and protect Amber. Now they realized that Amber was not worth protecting. They also released evidence that Amber's assistant had given them the details of Emma's travel schedule, including her departure time, airport location, and airline. Finally, they clarified that Emma had not thrown the flowers on the ground. She'd actually been much more polite to them than they deserved. They even recognized that Emma had tried to protect the fans by asking the police to be careful with them. Amber's official fan club had become a leaderless army. Her biggest fans had turned their backs on her. How could they ever trust her again? Not only were her fans abandoning her, it seemed that everyone had turned on her. A number of companies who had featured her in their marketing campaigns took down the ads and started the process to cancel her contracts. Amber knew she was finished, completely finished. Hiding out at Nathan's house, she was looking for anything else that she could smash. Her assistant tried to stop her. Amber, you need to stay calm. You have to think about the baby, Gary said. There's no need to get so upset. There's still good things coming for you. Remember, the pregnancy means you have a hold over Nathan. You may have to stop modeling for now, but he'll eventually have to break off his engagement with Emma and marry you. Just think of all the power you'll have as the wife of Global CEO. Amber started to feel calmer as she reminded herself that Gary's words had some truth to them. Even if Emma was making a comeback, Amber still had a chance to come out ahead, especially given that she was pregnant with Nathan's child. As soon as they stepped off the plane, Emma received a video call from Eric, and Lisa began scrolling through her news feed. The news was looking good. Amber's reputation had taken a beating. Should I congratulate my wife on a victorious battle? Eric asked as he leaned back in his chair. The soft light in his room washed over his face, highlighting its sharp contours. He really was incredibly handsome. Emma laughed gently and responded in a cheeky tone. You don't need to congratulate me every time I make a move. Can't you tell? I'm just looking for any excuse to give you a call. Her heart fluttered. Too bad I can't come home tonight, she whispered. If you tell me that you miss me, a miracle might happen, Eric teased. Do you want to try? You don't need a miracle for me to tell you that I miss you, she replied seriously. She was embarrassed by her emotions, though, and hung up the phone before he could respond. Eric gave a muffled laugh as he called out to Luke. Luke, I want to go to Seattle. Could you get me on a flight as soon as possible? And while you're at it, prep those documents I need to review so I can take them with me. After leaving the airport, Emma and Lisa went straight to the studio for the photo shoot. Some of the other models who would be in the ad had already arrived. The photographer, Scott Young, thought they all seemed very professional, 
but he was worried about Emma. Her expressionless face and her low-key traveling outfit led him to worry that she wouldn't be able to meet the high expectations demanded by this opportunity. He needed the models to react quickly and show emotions that suited the jewelry they would be wearing. This photo shoot would be a real test of all their abilities. Emma changed into the clothes she would wear for the shoot. In a simple, low-cut black dress and a sleeveless denim jacket, she exuded sexiness. Scott realized at least he didn't have to worry about her beauty coming through in the photos. Everyone there, even the other models, were impressed with the perfect proportions and her refined silhouette. But her expression still seemed blank. Scott walked over to explain what he needed. The photos we're taking this evening really need to feel fierce. I want you to imagine you're a wild cat out at night prowling through your domain. I understand, Emma nodded. I'm ready. Scott wasn't convinced, but there was no time to discuss it further. Come on, everyone, it's time to start. Let's get going with some solo shots. The models were called up one by one to pose in front of the screen. Each one was professional and efficient, and Scott was easily getting exactly what he needed for the shots. Now the pressure was on Emma, who was up last. If she wasn't up to delivering what she needed to, the whole shoot would be ruined. When her name was called, Emma walked in front of the screen wearing the bracelet from Bellamy's Charming Night Collection. Scott once again explained that she needed to show her wildness, and Emma smiled and nodded her understanding. He was doubtful, thinking she was just pretending to understand, and hated when models did that. It usually resulted in a gigantic waste of everyone's time. Deciding not to confront her about it just yet, though, he said, Let's just try a few test shots to make sure you've got it. I've got it, Emma responded. Let's just do it. Her confidence annoyed and aggravated him. He was starting to worry that his shoot would turn into a joke. You asked for it, he warned. Once I start, you won't get a second chance. That's fine, she answered calmly. The other models were convinced that she was making a mistake. Why wouldn't she take the chance to get some test shots in first? All right, let's go. Scott waved at Emma to get started, even though he was sure she would fail. She nodded, and then, like someone had flipped a switch, she seemed to become a completely different person, shocking everyone in the room. They watched as she took a wide stance, grasped her right wrist with her left hand, pulled it up to her mouth, and then gently spread apart her lips. As she bit down on her middle finger, her eyes turned so fierce that one of the models gasped. They were almost frightened by the threatening look in her eyes. It was like she turned into a wild animal. Emma's moves were magical. She somehow made it seem like the bracelet on her wrist was supplying her with wild energy that was barely contained. She and the bracelet meshed together perfectly, like they were made for each other. The photographer was speechless. Where had Bellamy found this gem? Someone with this talent and skill could match any model on the international scene. Episode 19, Let's Get Married Immediately. Everyone in the room was stunned. How could Emma be this good? She didn't need any test shots, even though it was a challenging brief, and she had to change poses every few seconds. The shoot was just incredible. No matter what poses Scott asked for, Emma was able to provide them. It was almost as if he was testing her. He began by describing what he wanted, but then just started calling out single words. Lazy, seductive, threatening. Cute. Emma immediately responded with exactly the right poses and expressions. She was quick and expressive, and she drew everyone's attention with her spellbinding presence. Lisa watched the whole session from the side, taking her own photos of Emma to send to Eric. She wouldn't have told anyone this, but she felt a secret thrill that she knew the CEO of Kaleidoscope and even had his phone number. What she didn't know, however, was that Eric was on his way to Seattle right at that moment. The intense photo shoot convinced the photographer and everyone watching that Emma was as good as any model in the industry, maybe better. The onlookers included Julius Taylor, who gave her an enthusiastic thumbs up from the side as the session finished up. He felt so bad that he'd yelled at her after the Crown Star fiasco that he'd apologized to her once again, this time in person. 
When the shoot was finally over, Emma removed her makeup and changed into her own clothes. Her expression regained its usual calm once again. Lisa hurried to cover her with a jacket, feeling so overwhelmed with joy and satisfaction that her eyes were filling with tears. After giving Emma a quick hug, her phone started buzzing. She said to Emma with a frown, It's Nathan. Do you want to talk to him? Emma's gaze just darkened, but she took the phone from Lisa. Hello? Emma, how are you? Things good out there? Have you heard any news? Nathan asked, treading lightly. Why? Emma asked, pretending a calm she didn't really feel. What happened? Oh, it's nothing. He was sure she wouldn't have found out yet since she was busy in Seattle. How about I fly out to Seattle tomorrow? We can apply for a wedding license there and have a ceremony in a couple of days. It'll be perfect. The scenery is beautiful and the whole feel of the city is great. We could even take advantage of this opportunity to have a holiday. It could be our honeymoon. Nathan knew that Emma's family was very wealthy. They owned a famous perfume empire with sales in the millions of dollars. He also knew that they didn't like him and had practically cut all ties with Emma because of him. But in the end, she was still a miller and would inherit a pretty penny someday. He wanted to hold on to her. She looked good on his arm, she was naive and easy to control, and she would someday be very, very rich. He wanted to make sure they got married before she saw the damaging video. When she realized that he and Amber had been intimate after all, she was sure to call off the wedding. She shocked him with her response. Given what's been going on between you and Amber, I don't think we should get married right now. Emma, you know there's really nothing going on between Amber and me. I already explained what happened in those photos. Amber simply lost her balance because of her injury, poor girl, and fell into my arms. What could I do but catch her? And what about the video? Emma asked, maintaining her calm tone. I'm in Seattle, not out in the middle of nowhere with no Wi-Fi connection. Did you really think I wouldn't be able to see the news? Or that I would actually be that easy to trick? Emma, please, trust me a little. We've been together for so many years. Don't you know what type of person I am? Don't you know that you're the only one I love? Then let's put it this way. One of us has to leave Global. It's either Amber or me, Emma said decisively. Emma, you've always been the one who's understood me best. You've always been so supportive. Why are you pressuring me now? Now that he was being put on the spot, Nathan couldn't decide what to do. Amber was the woman he genuinely loved, and she was pregnant with his child. But Emma had the means to make him a very happy man down the road. If you feel like I'm pressuring you, feel free to go look for Amber. I'm sure she'll be very understanding. Now that he was thinking things through, Nathan decided maybe he should give up Amber. After all, she'd only gotten to be as successful as she was because of him. What could she really bring him in the future? It's you. I choose you. Give me some time to speak to Amber. I'll come out to meet you, and then we'll get married right away. I'll be waiting for you, Emma responded. Her words stayed calm, but inside she felt the contempt just waiting to spill out. Lisa glanced at Emma's scornful look and grabbed the phone back, hanging up the call. From now on, we're not taking any of his calls. I'm tired of him ruining the mood. That's fine with me. Let's go back to the hotel. I'm really tired. Back at the hotel, Lisa gave Emma a hug and said, Get some rest, and don't worry too much about Nathan and Amber. You've got to be refreshed for tomorrow's outdoor shoot. I know, Emma nodded before closing the door. She suddenly noticed the sound of water coming from the bathroom. Who's there? She asked in a challenging tone. Was her room being cleaned at that time of night? Emma heard the water turn off, but afraid she might have entered the wrong room, quickly headed back out the door. Before she could leave, a deliciously deep voice said, It's me. Emma turned around, shocked to see Eric. You? How? She stammered before he wrapped his arms around her. Didn't I say there would be a miracle? He loosened his grip then placed a tantalizing kiss on her lips. I was tired from my flight, so I decided to have a shower to wake me up. Emma's mind was in a blur. She had no idea he was planning to show up. She wrapped her arms around his waist. My dear wife, should I remind you? I'm not wearing anything. Emma instinctively looked down, then up again, her face flushed. Then go, finish your shower. 
Will you come with me? He picked her up and carried her into the bathroom, where he slowly undressed her and brought her into the shower. Holding her face between his hands, he went in for a passionate kiss. Careful with my lips, she said. I still need to shoot an ad tomorrow. He smirked before moving downward. What about here? Or here? Emma trembled under his touch and soon lost all awareness of her surroundings. True to his word to wait until he had completely won her heart, he stopped short of the final step. After their thoroughly pleasant shower, they relaxed in the bedroom. Emma slowly rubbed moisturizer onto her skin while Eric reviewed the documents he had brought with him. It's so late, she said. Do you still have to work? Eric put down his work and motioned Emma to come closer. When she sat down on his lap, he smiled apologetically. It's a habit. I can stop. Am I not interestingly enough for you? Today, Nathan called and said he wants to marry me immediately, Emma complained sadly. Episode 20, Nathan's Choice In one quick movement, Eric grabbed Emma's waist and pulled her close. Oh, so are you thinking of marrying him, then? He teased. How could you even ask that? I admit I was lost once, but now I know exactly where I'm going, she murmured. My destination is you. Eric flipped over, positioning himself on top of her. He looked at her seriously with his dark eyes. I can barely control myself around you, but I know we have to wait. Even though we're already married, I still want you to get to know me. And be sure you want to spend the rest of your life with me. When we're both certain we want to be together, that's when we'll truly belong to each other. He sighed and continued, In this business, my options are endless. I can have whatever I want. The only thing I've never been able to find before is a partner with a pure heart. Then we both share the same goal. Let's follow this path together and live a happy life, Emma replied. I would never have thought that Eric Roberts, king of the entertainment industry, doesn't just have a fun and carefree life. I always used to picture you as a player surrounded by swarms of beautiful women. Haven't you ever wanted that? When a woman asks a question like that, there's only one way to answer, he replied. He leaned over and gave her a passionate kiss. A kiss so fiery, it made all her worries melt away. That night, wrapped in his arms, she slept more soundly than she ever had before. Meanwhile, Nathan was having a much harder time of things. Emma's request for Amber to leave Global had put him in an impossible predicament. Not only was Amber carrying his child, she also had the evidence of his misdeeds in her hands. He couldn't afford to offend either woman. He drove home that evening filled with uncertainty. When he opened the door to see Amber waiting for him on the couch, his heart sank. Nathan, she cried as she flung herself into his arms, grabbing him tightly around his waist. What should I do? Does this mean I can't be a model for you anymore? Amber, how about you go overseas for a while to take care of your pregnancy? Nathan said. You can come back after the baby's born. And when you do, I promise, I'll do what I've done before. I'll make you famous again. Amber stepped back from him in shock. You're asking me to leave the country? Are you trying to get rid of me? Maybe Emma's stupid enough to fall for something like that, but I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. Don't forget, I'm still carrying your child. I've been your lover for so many years, Nathan. Do you really think you can just cast me aside like this? That, that's not what I meant. Think carefully, Nathan. Who do you want to spend the rest of your life with? Do you love Emma? Of course not. I love you. Only you, he pleaded. But Emma gave me a condition. If you don't leave Global, she won't marry me. Even if you do marry her, you aren't guaranteed the Miller fortune, Amber argued. Her family doesn't seem to care about her. And if she did go ahead with marrying you and they somehow accepted it, how much would she even inherit? Do you really want to pin all your hopes on her only to end up with nothing? Stay with me. 
Then at least we'll have each other and our child. The three of us can build a future together. Isn't that what you want? She took a step toward him as she continued. Nathan, tell me the truth. Do you want me or do you want Emma? All I need is one word from you and I'll go straight to the abortion clinic. I'll leave Global and you'll never see me again. Nathan just looked at her, not saying a word. Amber turned away, picked up her phone, and called her assistant. Gary, get me a doctor's appointment right away. I want an abortion. What are you doing? Nathan cried, swiping the phone out of her hand. Don't be so cruel. Did I say I was leaving you? Her face lit up. Does that mean you're choosing me after all? How could I let you go? You're the only woman I love and the mother of my child. Don't you realize I've been protecting you all these years? He had finally made up his mind to end things with Emma. It was a pity to give up on the Miller's family wealth, but as Amber said, nothing was guaranteed to him anyway. He couldn't lose her and his child chasing an illusion. I knew you loved me, Amber beamed. You've always treated me better than her. She hugged him tightly as tears of joy began to stream down her face. All I want is to have your child and be part of your family. Just try not to stir up any more trouble. Don't go online too much and don't read those awful comments. News like this passes quickly. The top 10 model award judges won't be impressed by this scandal, but they're too focused on professionalism anyway. We can still reach your goals without them. I understand, but now you need to listen to me. She sat down on the sofa, pulling him down with her. You can't give Emma any more work. Look at how arrogant she is right now, thinking she's on top of the world just because she signed one deal. She thinks that she's all that. She's even trying to defy your orders. But Global will survive without her, Amber continued. If we need another model, we'll find one. But we can't just let her go, either. If she has the chance to get revenge on us, she'll do it. Just hold on to her and keep her from working. In three years, she'll be so old she won't be able to make a comeback. But Emma has everyone in her quarter right now. People will want to hire her. Doesn't that make things easier? Let's wait till she gets back from Seattle and find her some worthless corporate client, something low-end and cheap. She won't be so desirable after that. Nathan looked at Amber. He knew what she had suggested was a bit extreme, but he couldn't think of another way around the situation. He nodded and said, All right, I'll do it. Amber smiled. And if anyone else calls wanting to hire Emma, we'll just tell them she's not interested. Nathan pulled her close and planted a kiss on her forehead. This time, his decision came from the heart. He would end things with Emma. After that, she would be just another global model with three years remaining on her contract. Just like Amber had said, he had to keep Emma from becoming famous and getting revenge on them. He needed to do everything he could to hold her down. Episode 21, Emma's New Manager The next day, Emma was scheduled to film the commercial. Originally, she was supposed to be filmed with a few other models, but Scott had felt her presence was too strong. The other models would pale in comparison to her. So in the end, they decided to go ahead with the shoot using only Emma and one male model. Early in the morning, Lisa knocked on Emma's door. She opened the door only slightly as if she were hiding something. Lisa looked at her and asked, Is there someone else in there with you? I... Emma, how could you do this? You may have split up with that jerk, but you just got married to Eric. How could you mess around like this? Let me in, let me in. Let me see who's daring enough to seduce my precious Emma. Lisa was infuriated and began trying to push the door open with all her strength. But just as she did, Eric reached out with his hand and stopped it. His tall, fit physique appeared in the doorway, towering over the two women. Oh, Mr. Roberts, it's you. Lisa laughed awkwardly, stunned by the sight of him. Eric glanced at Lisa, giving her an approving nod. He could see that, with her around, no other man would be able to get close to Emma. 
Without a word, he headed to the bathroom to shower. Once he was gone, Lisa grabbed Emma by the arm and looked at her in disbelief. Why didn't you tell me earlier? You let me make a complete fool of myself in front of him. Emma shrugged innocently. I only found out last night when I got back, she said. Oh my God, he's so romantic. And busy as he is, he got a flight all the way out here just to keep you company? Emma, your luck has really changed. Think about all those years you spent with that jerk. When did he ever visit you at work, even though you were working for him? Lisa's face had lit up. What a massive improvement this is. Are we still going to the shoot? Emma asked, appearing much more interested in the job than she had the night before. Is Mr. Roberts coming? Yes, he should be, Emma whispered. Eric had come all this way. Of course he wouldn't miss watching Emma's performance. The show at Brooklyn City Center had been unforgettable. He was looking forward to seeing how Emma would do at an outdoor shoot. Thirty minutes later, the three of them had arrived at the shoot location. Eric stayed by the car, keeping his distance from the set so he wouldn't be recognized. After getting dressed, Emma stepped out of the changing room in a light blue lacy dress. It hugged her elegant body and showed off her long, slender legs which looked like they went on forever. She looked perfect, like the work of a master sculptor. The concept for the day's shoot involved a bride chasing her runaway groom. She would hurt her leg during the chase without the groom noticing. In the end, the sun's rays would hit the sparkling diamond on her hand, creating a beautiful rainbow and reminding him of the promises he made to her. The commercial would end with the groom returning to the bride for a heartfelt reunion. Scott, as well as being the photographer for the campaign stills, was also directing the commercial shoot. Emma, we're going to need quite a lot of emotional shifts from you today. Are you okay with that? He asked her. No problem, she said gently. He nodded and motioned for her to get into position. Should we do a quick run through? That's not necessary. Emma replied. Normally, he would have insisted on a practice run, but after seeing Emma's professionalism the previous day, he had complete trust in her. So, since she was ready, he went ahead and started filming. Because the commercial had no script and lasted only 30 seconds, the models needed to be completely convincing as their characters. The first scene they were shooting was one where Emma would be chasing the groom. Her face would need to display a range of emotions, looking hopeful at first, then slowly becoming desperate at the realization that she can't catch up. Filming was about to start. Without any help, Emma found her exact position in front of the camera. As soon as the camera began rolling, Emma disappeared, and in her place stood an abandoned bride looking around helplessly. Her eyes welled up with emotion, though no tears came. She was panting, breathlessly, exhausted from her chase. Her desperation grew as she continued searching. Her face showed that she was at the brink of falling apart. As Eric watched from afar, he realized Emma was like a dust-covered gem. It was obvious she was still the talented model she had been three years ago. If she had never stepped back, how successful would she be right now, he wondered. Lisa approached Eric, beaming with pride. Our Emma isn't bad, is she, Mr. Roberts? If only she hadn't been held back by that jerk. From now on, no one will hold her back, Eric responded coolly as he got back into the car. Lisa smiled because she knew Emma wasn't going to let anyone hold her back ever again. And of course, it was reassuring that this man, powerful as he was, knew that too. Thanks to Emma's competence, the shoot ran smoothly and was finished ahead of schedule. The director was extremely impressed with her, and he wanted to offer her a solution to her rumored problems. I heard your current company has no idea how to build your career, he told her, handing her a business card. Are you interested in stepping out onto a bigger stage? She politely took his card, but she responded the same way she always did to those kinds of offers. I'm happy where I am right now. The director smiled at her. Even so, we would be glad to hear from you anytime. She thanked him and started toward the car. 
Suddenly, Lisa ran up to her, Emma's phone in hand, exclaiming, A woman named Ashley just called, saying she's the new manager Nathan arranged for you. She said that after the shoot, you need to get home right away to make an appearance at a company's event. It's in three days' time. I've just done some research on them. They're an established brand, but they've had tons of quality issues and complaints about their products. Nathan obviously wants to destroy you. Emma grabbed her phone from Lisa and replied calmly, Let's head back first. We'll talk about this later. But you've worked so hard to be here. If you take this job, it'll all go to waste. Lisa's heart was breaking for her. Lisa, do you think I haven't prepared for something like this? Emma shot back. She felt ready to handle it. Although in truth, she hadn't expected Nathan to actually turn his back on the prospect of her family's fortune and choose to stay with Amber. Like I've said before, there's only a thin line between being on top and losing it all. I won't let him beat me again. As Emma approached the car, her eyes met Eric's, and they both smiled. After she took a seat next to him, he handed his phone to her and said, I asked Luke to dig up information on this new manager of yours, Ashley. Her resume and dark secrets are all here for you to read up on. Episode 22, Emma on the Attack You know about the event Nathan set up for me? Emma turned to look at Lisa, thinking she must have told Eric. But Lisa quickly shook her head, indicating she had nothing to do with it. With my connections, I can find out anything I want to know, Eric responded. His abilities no longer surprised Emma. How else would he have managed to get right to the top of the industry? She smiled at him and said, Don't worry. You've already given me exactly what I need to take care of this. Eric didn't respond. Instead, he reached out his hand and gently stroked her hair. As she watched the two of them, Lisa got goosebumps. These two just got married, she thought. Why does it seem like they've been in love for a lifetime? After the shoot, the three of them returned to New York. During the flight, Emma and Eric leaned on each other affectionately. But as soon as the plane landed, they went their separate ways like complete strangers. Nathan had sent the new manager, Ashley, to pick up Emma from the airport. Emma could see her waiting at the arrival gate, wearing an amethyst-colored dress, six-inch heels, and oversized sunglasses. She kept glancing impatiently at her wristwatch, as if she were the talented star and Emma was just an inconvenience. A sign with Emma's name on it was propped up on the floor by Ashley's feet. Emma ignored it and headed straight out of the airport with Lisa. Lisa chuckled to herself as they left. Emma's developing an attitude, she thought. On the car ride back, Emma's phone rang. Emma, where are you? Ashley barked. Wasn't your flight supposed to arrive at noon? I'm already on my way back to the office, Emma replied calmly. Didn't you see me waiting for you? I saw you, she said without a hint of emotion in her voice. Then why didn't you come over to me? Ashley yelled. With those sunglasses on, I thought you were at the airport to start a movie. Emma smirked. Ashley swore under her breath and hung up the phone. Her face flushed red with anger as she rushed out of the airport alone. She had worked in the industry for years, but her management work had quickly earned her a poor reputation. Whenever one of her artists found success, they'd lost it just as quickly, either by offending someone powerful or getting sent to rehab. This time, Amber Lee herself had reached out to Ashley and asked her to manage Emma, and Ashley was determined to prove herself. But how could she have known Emma would make a fool of her before they'd even met? She wasn't giving up yet, though. After all, Emma was outdated, how dare she not show her a decent amount of respect? Emma and Lisa arrived at Global well before Ashley did. Once outside, Emma headed straight for Nathan's office, threw the door open, and marched right up to where he was sitting. I'm waiting on your explanation, Emma fumed as she slammed her hands down on the desk. There's something happening between you and Amber, isn't there? Nathan stopped what he was doing, hesitated for a moment, then attempted to change the subject. You just got back from your trip. Why did you come straight here? How long has it been? She continued. How long have you and Amber been together? Emma, he yelled, standing up to face her. 
I've had enough of your accusations. Can't you just be kind to me, like Amber is, instead of nagging all the time? She slowly pulled her hands back as she looked him in the eyes. What do you two think I am? A toy? Emma, let's break up. I'm with Amber, and we're truly in love. He sounded cool and detached, like he was talking to a complete stranger. You can't blame me. There's no logic or reason in love. From now on, I'm simply your boss, and you're my employee. She sneered as she listened to him, but she was calmer than he had expected. So you're not planning to release me from my contract, she said. I guess you've realized that if you let me go, Amber won't stand a chance. Sorry, but you still have three years left. Is this why you've set up this event for me? I thought the event would suit you, given the current state of your career. Nathan sat back down and began flipping through some papers. If there isn't anything else, you can go. Also, Ashley is your new manager, and from now on, you must follow her orders. Though Emma's heart was breaking, her head was filled with rage. She'd wasted so many years on this man, this jerk. Do you know what happens to cheaters, Nathan? They never get a happy ending. I will, though. With that, she turned around and left, more determined than ever to destroy him and his entire company. Emma returned to her office and closed the door, hoping for some time alone. Moments later, though, Ashley burst through the door and began yelling, Are you aware that from now on, you're my artist? Do you still want to be a model or not? How dare you treat me like this? Are you a pig? Emma rose from her chair and took a step toward Ashley. What did you just say to me? Say it again. I said, are you a pig? Ashley shot back arrogantly. As soon as the last word had left her mouth, Emma slapped her hard across the face. Don't ever call me that again, she hissed. Ashley was stunned. She stepped forward, ready to fight back. But just then, Emma pulled out her phone and handed it to her. I have plenty more photos just like this. Since you think I'm such a pig, I've decided to send them out to all the biggest news outlets. Ashley stood speechless, not quite understanding what Emma meant. Then she looked down at the screen to see a photo of her being intimate with a famous director. She froze with fear. This can't be, Ashley thought. How could she have these photos? I was always so careful. This is impossible. It must be a fake. Emma continued, I know Amber is behind all this. If you hadn't crossed the line, I wouldn't have troubled with a simple manager like you. But you don't seem to know who you're messing with. Ashley was sweating, and her hands began to tremble. If she'd known Emma had these photos, she never would have agreed to Amber's request to make Emma's life difficult. She fell down on her knees, pleading. Emma, I didn't mean to treat you like this. Please, don't release the photos. If you do, my life is over. Emma looked down at her. Listen to me closely. I would never hurt someone for no reason. But if you cross me again in any way, I will make your life a living hell. From today on, just do your job and I'll do mine. If you want to play games with me, I'll be happy to play along. But these photos aren't the only thing you'll have coming to you. Ashley stared up at her in disbelief. Emma looked so vicious and intimidating. And they told me she was a pushover, Ashley thought. Then she replied, I understand. I know the rules now. Good. Emma quickly composed herself, returning to her chair. She asked calmly, So, when do I need to be at the event? You... you're going? Ashley couldn't understand what Emma was thinking. Just tell me when, Emma said, 